Hello! Today's video is on how substances cross selectively permeable cell membranes. This content is especially focused for students that are heading toward a healthcare field. My website, sciencewithsusanna.com, has this blank drawing to accompany the video as well as practice materials to quiz yourself. The lipid bilayer is only permeable to small and nonpolar substances. Oxygen and carbon dioxide are nonpolar gases that freely diffuse from their areas of higher concentration to areas of lower concentration. Steroid hormones have a cholesterol-based structure and are able to pass through cell membranes, although more recent discoveries have demonstrated that even steroid hormones often make use of a variety of protein channels and transporters. Ethanol, alcohol, has a slow and limited ability to cross cell membranes, but it does help to explain some of its toxic effects. Even water, although small, is too polar to easily diffuse across a cell membrane, although it does in small amounts. Passive transport is movement down a concentration gradient. Simple diffusion is when the substance can pass through the lipid bilayer. Gas exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide is the best example for healthcare students of substances that don't need a transport channel. Facilitated diffusion is passive transport that uses a channel. Aquaporins are extremely complex channels formed from the coordinated interaction of six different proteins. These are inserted into the membrane under the influence of vasopressin. It allows the body to retain more water and this raises blood pressure. This hormone is also known as antidiuretic hormone to emphasize that by inserting aquaporins into the membrane, we make less urine and retain more water. Once inserted into the membrane, aquaporins facilitate osmosis, the diffusion specifically of water. The channels allow water to move in either direction. Sometimes water leaves cells and sometimes it enters cells, always following the rules of diffusion. Understanding the movement of water under different medical circumstances will help you learn about fluid shifts, such as what occurs during pulmonary edema or circulatory shock. Next, we'll look at glucose channels. There are many different types of glucose channels, but almost all of them are passive transporters that merely allow glucose to flow down its concentration gradient. Most relevant for healthcare students are the glucose channels that are inserted into the membrane under the influence of the hormone insulin. Glucose can then move down its concentration gradient from the bloodstream into the cell. This is how insulin lowers blood sugar. The voltage-gated sodium channel is an example of an ion channel in cell membranes. Serum sodium is the concentration of sodium in the blood, and it is maintained at about 135 to 145 milliequivalents per liter at all times. If it varies too much from this, patients can die because this specific concentration is essential for life as we know it, from brain activity to heart beating and contraction of the respiratory muscles. This channel opens its gate when the inside of the cell membrane becomes a little bit less negatively charged. Sodium entry causes depolarization of a cell, and that causes the heart to beat, the respiratory muscles to contract, and the brain neurons to fire. Potassium channels select only for potassium ions. Unlike sodium, serum potassium is very, very low, only 3.5 to 5.1 milliequivalents per liter. This very low level in the blood is also essential for the life functions of breathing, heart contraction, and brain activity. And notice the very high concentration of potassium ions that is maintained inside of the cell. A voltage-gated potassium channel opens its gate when the inside of the cell is positive or depolarized. Since potassium is highly concentrated on the inside of the cell, it diffuses out of the cell to go down its concentration gradient. Potassium exit causes repolarization of a cell to make the inner membrane negative again. 
Now we'll look at the amazing sodium potassium ATPase pump. This channel binds three sodium ions and forces them out of the cell by using the energy from hydrolysis of ATP to ADP. This burst of energy flips the pump outward and it releases the sodium ions into the extracellular fluid. While it's flipped like this, it binds to potassium and brings them into the cell when it flips back to its original shape. So this pump uses ATP to pump up the concentration gradients of sodium and potassium. This is the pump that maintains that high sodium concentration outside of the cell and the high potassium concentration inside of the cell. Therefore, we call this active transport because it pumps against the concentration gradient. It requires ATP. The sodium-potassium ATPase pump keeps the serum sodium and serum potassium concentration steady so that life can continue. Active transport can be carried out by channel pumps, like this one, but another form of active transport is a process called endocytosis. In this process, ATP energy is used to literally wrap the cell membrane around a substance it wants to bring inside. White blood cells are particularly well known for this sort of process that we call phagocytosis. In summary, biological membranes strictly regulate passage of all substances. Without such complex and coordinated regulation, life could not exist. Now, spend a few minutes reviewing this information, make sure you understand it reasonably well, and then use my Quizlet flashcards to practice and review. See you in the next video!